Hello and welcome once again on this Monday afternoon. Thank you very much for joining me. My name is Simon Williamson and I'm here from the Avago Ink Designs team. Um, it's um, a bit overcast here in fairness, but I can see all your lovely comments that you've um, got some different weather throughout the country. If you haven't already, you can subscribe to these channels as well. Just um, hit the um, subscription on there and then you'll be kept informed of any news and notifications that we think is good for you to know. Uh, and you can always leave a comment after the show as well if you've enjoyed it. It should be really good too. So I can see there's loads of people online already. So let's have a, few, let's have a look who's joined us. We've got Sandra, Roxy Lee, Phil Bags, Heather, Denise. Denise has ordered her owl collection, so she's just looking forward to having a play. So that should be really good. They're really cute characters, them, Denise. So you have to post some pictures of what you make with them. Right. Let me show you the first demonstration that we're going to do today. I've got this really cute little card, which is like a breakout card. I'm going to show you how to recreate this. And we've got the little dinosaurs popping out from um, a wooden crate, so to speak. So let's get started, and I'll show you how to make this card. Right, well, let's get my stamping platform first. So I've already pre-cut just a piece of craft card, um, just enough that it's going to go on my um, tenfold card afterwards, okay? So a little board around the edge. It's hard to see on my dark shirt, isn't it? But just a slight border, but I've cut that down ready, so I'll put that down there. And I'm going to be using the wood grain um, stamp from, I think it was a Thirsty Brush one, actually. It's an old one, but it's one that I had in my collection. It's really good for this, so we're going to use it. I'll get that down there. Oh, I think Roxy Lee says it was nice to meet me in the shop. It was nice to meet you too, love. It was a lovely open day, wasn't it? So just going to give that a good liberal ink in to make sure we get that well covered. And we're going to push that down on top of this piece of card, make sure we get all that detail. And we'll do that a couple of times just to make sure we get all that detail in place. I'll just move that card out of the way. That's brilliant. And I'm going to move this down now. I'm going to move the stamp upwards so we can get the top half of this covered as well. I'll put my mind on this lower section to make sure it stabilizes it. We'll pick that up. Is that a good inking? Push that down. And because we're going to do a breakout project, what I need to do now is the back of this as well, because then these bits, when they're folded out, will have the same wood print on the back as well. So we're going to turn this over, and we'll do exactly the same again. We'll lay, lay a stamp onto the top. You might want to leave yours plain, but I think it looks nice with the grain when it pops through. Let's give that a good ink. I'm going to move that up and move this stamp down just so we can get all that lovely detail and make sure we've got it everywhere we need. Bit more ink. That good push. And there we have. Let's move our die out there. The stamp out of the way, sorry. Under there. So we've got now now got a piece, a nice little piece of like wood panel card, and it's done on the front and the back. And then that way, when we tear through this in a second, you're gonna get detail on both sides. Right. But I think it looks a little bit too one tone, so I'm going to just knock it back a little bit, really. I brought some in um, Distress Ink Walnut Stain. It's an old pad, this one, as well, but what it'll do, it'll just take the edge of this card, just get a piece of paper. I'm just going to just bring some of that onto the edge. And 
just go around all them sides. Just so I don't want it to look so new. I think I put some in the center and blend it outwards. I'm just going to do the front of this as well, so I'm not going to do the back. And then when we do tear through, it'll be a lighter colour that comes through. So it'll give a bit more contrast. There we go. I like that. So I'm going to put that to one side. I'll just move my ink away. Anything. Right, so now what we need to do is we need to create the area that we're going to actually be tearing through. And the best way I've found to do this is to get a pokey tool to start you off and just stab it into the center. And we're just going to do a few holes just to start breaking that center area open. There we go. And then from that, we can use his fingers and we can start tearing. And it doesn't matter if it's not equal, but we want this to be really natural, kind of. I'll tear that little bit. I'm just going to work all these outwards. And keep going around from that centre point we've made. Go around to this side. So I'm not being too precise I just want to make sure that that opening is going to really work when we start to pin it back low so I think we're about there with that one I think that's a good size I'm going to use a little bit of tape runner under these bits to just secure them down now so I'll just get that tape runner I would at home use um, wet glue but because it's you need to kind of leave it to set it's not got long enough I'm just going to use a tape runner for today I'm going to go around and get all those little bits. And you can get some really good three dimension with this as well. And you can leave some up if you want to. You don't have to stick them all down. A little bit onto these. Leave that little bit up, I think. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue under these because they keep lifting. I just need a little bit more hell whites. Push these down at this other side. Let me take runners run out and just get another one. And then finally that one. So you can see if I hold that hole on the actual tenfold, we've really got a nice breakout area now for his characters to go within. It's a really fast way of doing this, and then you can have loads of fun with this, put any characters in this little aperture that you want to. Let's get our little um, characters ready now. So we'll put that to one side. I'll bring the stamping platform back in. And I brought two of the dinosaurs from the dinosaur collection in. And we're going to use the heads of these. We're not going to need to do the whole body. So we're just going to concentrate on the head area and on this one we are going to use the full one so it can overlap it then just push that down ink those up i still love the little cheeky faces of these characters i've got to say and there you go just take these Get the stamps off, try and clear as I go, less mess later. And I brought my watercolour fan pan in, just for speed, just want to give them a little bit of a pop of colour and make them stand out, so it just, um, you don't need to bring all your watercolours out, just a few base colours will be brilliant. Let's just open this up. I think we're going to do this one like in a, a greeny colour for a change. So we'll just put a... Green wash on it. Gonna keep that bit dark around the top bit. And then use the water pen to drag that out.
around its um, face. You can always go back as well and add more colour if you want to. And I tend to, when I'm using these palettes, I tend to mix the actual colour just a little bit off the image and then I can add a bit more water if I want it a bit waterier. And I can drag it from there. So that's going to be sufficient. It's going to be cutting this bit off. So let's go back to this character. I'm just going to just, just take some water out of there so it's not all green. And I think we'll do a nice um, purple one now. So I'll just get a purple colour I've got up here. And just get some of that purple pull onto this little fella. Around his body. A little bit more pigment up so it goes a bit darker. Put a bit of blue in there. There we go. And I'm just going to go for, I think, a, a bit of an orangey kind of colour, a bit of red, just uh, to his back. And we'll do these bits just so they pop out in colour. That's the beauty, though, with these, isn't it? The dinosaurs. Nobody really knows what colour they were, so you can. Um, Use your own colours when you're doing this. Give them little orange toenails. And I think we'll go with an orange tummy as well. Break that up. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I was going to give that a quick blast with a heat gun just to dry it off. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna tear this bit off that's wet so we can die cut the images out. There we go, slip that water down there. I'll bring in my dye plate so we can cut these. There's lots of comments today. Let's have a look. Great idea, never seen that. Sam says, great idea, never seen that before. New thing to try breakout. It's a really good card. I'll tell you what's nice as well. You could do it at Christmas, like your toys are bursting out of the actual package. It's just a fun way of doing it, isn't it? So I'm just going to get some scissors, just two seconds. What I'm actually going to do, rather than die cut these, because I don't want the white edge, I'm just going to actually scissor cut them and fuzzy cut round them. So I don't want that border to ruin the fact that they're in the dark in the parcel. And they're really simple. Images just to fussy cut around. We'll just fussy cut our two friendly dinosaurs. You could always use the dye as well if you prefer, but I just think because they're in the dark, I don't want a white border. I'll just draw that around there. I'll just take it down that bit and I'm just going to chop that bit off because I don't think I'm going to need any of that in a minute. So I'm just going to put that one there and then let's cut this happy fella out. I know a lot of people like fussy cutting anyway, they prefer to do it than other die cutting. It's nice though, isn't it? It's rewarding to cut all of them at once on an evening and then you've got them all prepared. Just cut around this little bit. Excuse my cutting if I miss a little bit. I just want to get the image out for us.
There we go. We've got our two characters look there. Just going to get rid of this piece of paper we don't need. Right. So now we need to put these into place. So this one's going to be stuck on our actual card. And this one I'm going to stick to our aperture so it looks like it's a little bit in the forefront, a little bit of dimension. OK, so let's get this fella stuck in place first. And we'll use a bit of tape runner for this one. Let's, I think we'll put in there. And I could just trim off that edge that we don't need. And then on this one, you could wet glue it as well, but just for speed, I'm using the tape runner today. But we know he's going to go there, so if I put him down lightly, I'll be able to just decide where I want him. So if that's going to go about there, um, I think that's quite a good position, actually, see them both nice and clearly. So let's push them down into position. And then because this bit's a little bit bland at the bottom, I'm going to put some Hessian strip onto there. And because it were quite pale in colour, I've just added some spray onto it to darken it up a little bit. Let's get a piece of that put on. And this will make our sentiment then pop a little bit more. Let's pop some of that double-sided tape across there. That bit off. Take the ends off. Let's get my pokey tool. Me and red liner tape never get on sometimes, I tell you. There we go. So I'll just take that red liner tape. And I'm going to lay this. Across that double sided, turn it over and then secure that at the back. I'm going to chop the excess off, we don't need them bits. There we go. And I'm just going to squash them so they'll come off. So let me just put them back down. I'm going to put some foam pads now onto the back. I'll just try and do this delicately as possible so they're still gluing some of them. And this will just give it a little bit of height then when we actually secure it onto a um, tent fold. So just run some of these around the edge. Like anything that you're mounting upon um, these pads, make sure you put enough on so it doesn't slide. It does ruin your card for the sake of a few more pads. Put these on. one on our dinosaur as well to keep its head from flopping down. We'll just move these little bits out of the way a second. All right, so let's take these pads off and we'll mount this onto our card blank. Then we can have a look over here, leaving that black border on as temp fill card. Just add a little bit more definition around the edge. And then I've got some of the lovely sentiments um, from the Stamps by Me range. You know the ones that cut out loads of little black, almost like typewriter sentiments. I've got a selection which we're going to choose to put on here now. So let's have a look what we've got. So I've got sweet, awesome, sweet friend. Miss you, love you, make a wish. I think we should have miss you, love you. I think that's a nice combination. And we're going to glue these on top of our Hessian ribbon. So, miss you. And love you. Obviously at home you could get these a little bit more time to set. If you're using wet glue as well, it's a really good idea to use a peg just to hold them in place. But you get the gist, that's our little breakout card. Just put that at the back to hold it. There you go, you can see there, 
really nice design, really, really fun really. You can do these for kids, they can get involved as well. And you can see that it's just an easily tear out area. You could put any image behind that one. So I hope you enjoyed the first demonstration. We're now going to show you some more inspiration from the dinosaur collection. I'll be back in two minutes with the next demonstration, so we'll see you soon. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that inspiration. Some lovely samples in there. I think the design team did really well. I can see on the comments that um, I think it was Bill, no, Roxy Lee just had the owls delivered. I'm sure you're going to have a hoot with those these afternoon, aren't you? Make some lovely cards yourself. Right, so now I've got a bit of a different card here for you, but I'm really pleased with this one. It took me hours to get it right, and I'm going to show you how to make this one. I've simplified it a lot, but look at this lovely card. It's a lovely plant pot. With lots of little flowers in there and then there's a secret element that when you pull this flower up we've got a little hidden dinosaur look in the plant pot we can put them away just to say you made my day look i'm going to show you how to make this mechanism now for this card and i'm sure you've all got flower stamps and dies at home especially if you like stamps by me there's loads of flower images that they've always done so let's get started with this one I'll show you how to make this card so to start off, I'm going to be using the actual um, sprinkles die that comes from the Avago range, and this is going to give our backdrop to our main image. So let's get that through the um, die cutters first of all. Uh, do you have a new collection coming? There's always a new collection coming. As soon as I can tell you anything, I will let you know. Um, but yeah, there will be some new products coming. I'll just pop that through. Tracy said it took you hours, it'll take me all day. I know. I get determined though, Tracy. Once I think of an idea, I want to make it work. Just take that off. I'm just going to give that a bit of a shake down there. I'll over up later, I probably. I'm just going to just get those little bits off the actual plate. And I'm going to pop this back through now with the edging die that comes in the actual die with it. So let's pop that in there. And we'll just pop that through. There's loads of you on today, some names I've not recognised, so thanks very much for joining us. It does um, make it easy when there's loads of questions coming in, I've got to say. Here we go, let's just get that little fella. That to one side. So I'm not going to do too much to this because it's such a detailed background dye, but I want them sprinkles to shine through so you can see when I mat and layer them, it gives a really nice backdrop without much effort really. So let's get that glued into place. But the one thing with this one as well is that don't go right to the edge, you've got loads of glue in area. 
So we'll just get some of this wet glue to start coming out. Just put some little bits of glue in the center out of the way of those openings. I'm just going to put this onto the um, mat layer that I've already cut for it. Um, there you go, just give that a good push down. And instantly then, we've got our backdrop for that. So now we need to make the actual plant pot that's going to go at the bottom of it to hold us flowers. So I've just really simply cut out two shapes. And we've got one. Um, which is the bottom of the actual plant pot. If I lay them down, it's easy for you to see. I'll just take that way up. And then we've got a rim there, which is when it sticks over the top, you can see we've got our plant pot shape. But it looks a little bit too fresh there, so I'm just going to knock it back a little bit with some more colour. So just grab my little ink pad. I'm just going to get a piece of paper. I'm using that little eye zinc, one of the little mini ones. I don't have a colour on this one, but it's more like a, a coffee kind of colour. I'm just going to dab into that. I'm just going to bring that onto the edges and the corners. Make it look a bit soily, really, which is what I wanted. I'm just going to do the edges. And just soften that into the centre. I'm not going to do the top of this. I'm just going to concentrate on this strip now. And if we do the edges... All the way along, down them top bits, and down this side. You don't need too much pressure, it just picks up that detail and it's got like a light strip in the centre. I'm happy with that. If I just move this out of the way. You can see now when I glue this strip on, it's going to give definition of like a pot. You can see you've got like your dark and light areas really easily and don't take much time at all. So let's give a little bit of glue on here. And let's pop that strip across there in the centre. Give that a good push down. If I turn that over, just make sure I can make sure it's right in the right place. I can wipe off the excess glue then so it don't cause me any problems in a second. I'm happy with that. We've got our little plant pot. I can put that to one side. And then we need to think about our mechanism now. But for the mechanism of this pop-up card, all it is is a strip of card. And I've used a 300 GSM black card and I've folded it virtually in half. So we've got like kind of a hook. And what we're going to do is just put a little bit of double-sided tape at the bottom so that it kind of opens so far, but not all the way. So I'll just show you that one. If I do it like that, you can see it'll be pinned at the bottom, uh, a bit like a set of tongs, yeah? Let's get that double-sided tape off. And I'll do this, and I'll show you why I've done that in a second, because I found this in me hours of trying, why I need to do this. Okay. So then we know where this is going to go on the bottom of our card. So we know the maximum we want this belt to pull up to is going to be behind the actual plant pot. If we just draw, I use this screen so it stands out for you all. So I need a line that goes here, roughly. So if we're going to draw a line, let's draw one there. And all you need to do is make sure that you make your incision behind your plant pot so it's hidden. Yeah? And that's about as complicated as this is going to get, I promise you. So I'm going to use my pokey tool, pull through one side, through the other side. And I'm going to use my scissors then to cut along that line. I'm going to go around the other side and just cut the other side of that green line. Just we've got like a, a small slit in the card. Okay. And then this bit, I'm going to thread through. And then you see that goes into that gap really well. And then that will become our mechanism look, for going up and down. As simple as that. It's really easy to do, and that's what's going to give us that. Okay? So 
what we're going to do now is we're going to actually put some double-sided tape on the back of this, and mount it onto our base layer, and then that will stop it from moving around while we're constructing this. So I've got some red liner tape. I'm going to keep that to its position where I want it. I'm going to run some down either side of it, and then this will stop it going too wobbly. So it won't be able to go past that when it's stuck down. You see, it'll keep it in its like little channel. Same again. I try and read the comments there, and I can't, I can't remember where I got up to. <laughs> if you do have any questions, though, just put the QQQ at the beginning. It helps me see them faster. I've got a grey tenfold cold card, sorry, for that. So let's get this back in tape off. There we go. And then we can make sure that that's stuck down on our card blank exactly where we want it to be. There we go, nice in the centre. So our mechanism's now in place, and you can see that that'll move up and down as we want it to. Okay, so. What we're going to do now is we've got our little fella that we're going to have on this one again. We're going to use this lovely sitting down dinosaur. It's really cute and it looks like it's sitting on the plant pot when it comes up and down. So let's give this a little bit of colour using the watercolour. I think we'll go for that really nice purple that we had before. I'll have a bit of red in there as well. Give that a bit of a ready colour. I'll just keep it to the same kind of colours as the flowers, just so it kind of it adds a bit more detail to it, really. The purple on the outer and red in the middle will just blend in a bit more. A bit more red around its head. I'm not going to go too dark with this either, so I want to be almost a little bit more pastel -y. Drag that down to his body. Pick a bit of that purple up. There we go. I'm going to give him a little bit of a purple blush there on it. It's cheap. There we go. So we're not going to do more than that, so we don't need to. And I'm just going to die cut our little happy dinosaur out. I'm just going to cut that bit off so we don't want to get the um, wet watercolour on the die cut machine. Get my plates, just two seconds. Position that over there, and then we'll pop that through. So Simon Trace had a bit of an idea of aliens, and it's just a flying spaceships. That'll be out of this world, won't it? Let's be honest. I can imagine the aliens working with the breakout card. I don't know if that's what you're referring to, but. It'd be really good. Put that to one side. There we go. So we've got our friend a little dinosaur ready now. So I want to do on this is I want to put a little bit of red liner tame along the bottom that when we stick this down, it stops this coming too low. It gives it like a cut-off point. So let's get a bit of that red liner tape on the bottom. Just lift that off. I'm just going to give that a bit of a curl before I stick it down, because I'm going to want to curl it later. So let's get that in position. I can go right down there. Stick that down. You can see that then that stops that going too far. You've got like a natural stop. 
OK. Now what we want to do is put that into its lowest position, which is there. And the best thing to do is to cut this black piece now level with the top of your plant pot. So I know it's going to be there. So I know that that is going to be hidden once it's below there. I use that as my gauge. And I'm going to stick my happy dinosaur straight over that area now. So let's get some, I think we'll use tape running just so we don't get wet glue on this. We'll put that there. And then we know then when that dinosaur goes in, it disappears right down there. Okay. And the next thing to do is we need to secure this little pot. So we'll give it a bit of a curve. I'm just going to stick it on the edge and leave it a little bit more open, so a little bit more dimension on the front. So we'll use the tape runner for this again. Keep that in there. So just, let's put it about there. Let's put that about there. So you can see there's like a lovely little lip there for it. OK. So now we need to build up as flowers, really, don't we? So ahead of time, just to make this a little bit faster, I've cut quite a few different sizes of the little pretty penny dies, I think they were. I forgot what the collection was called. If somebody knows, you can put it in the comments. Um, I love these um, kind of flowers. They're really basic, but the colours, you can make them three-dimensional. You can stack them up. So I've got some of those. And I've cut out some greenery, really, just so we can build this up. Let's get some more of the greenery, because I need that. OK. So let's start off with building our pot up. So we've got some of this um, green, which actually is the foliage that goes with this collection, I believe. So let's just put that bit round. I think we're going to glue these bits on the side. So I'm going to use a bit of wet glue for these, so I know it's not going to affect the mechanism. We don't want to come out. Let's try again. There we go. I'll just get that coming down the plant pot. And I've got some darker. Uh, have I missed a question? I don't think I have. Oh. There you go. We'll get some of that darker green on there just to break it up a little bit. I'm going to get some more on this side now. So I've got some of the lighter and the darker. Let's just tear some of that darker off. I pick some of that glue up, but there's quite a lot on there. I don't want it to squelch out. So I'll put that there. And I think we're going to stick that there. We've got some foliage coming down now. And then simply with these big flowers, what I'm going to do is I'm going to concentrate on the dinosaur's head. I want to stick some of these behind it. So if we put some glue on the front surface, we can pop those underneath. And then let's have, I think we'll have a brighter one at the other side. I'll take a little bit of that glue off, actually, so I don't want it to... I don't want to stick it to the card so it doesn't open. Let's pop that there. And then we can push them down. We know that they go in nice, nicely. And if they need to move a little bit, there's a bit of wiggle room as it's wet glue. And then push them down. We know that that goes in there and hides nicely. Look. OK, so we'll push that down. And then we can build the rest of our flowers up now on the top. And that's really easy to do. So let's just use some of these lovely big ones. I'll put one here. Gluing these flat, you don't want any three dimension on this area, so it'll catch the actual mechanism if you do. I'll put a big one up there. And then we'll put. Oop, don't want to come up. Put some of these darker pink ones in. So I think we can put one behind there, like. Get some of these baby pink ones back in. That one can go up there. I think we'll have a big one again. Obviously, just make sure this has time to set when you're making yours. So you don't want to knock any of these bits off, do you? And I think that should be quite good. And I'm just going to get this small flower here. I'm going to just finish off this plant pot by putting one over here. There we go. 
and then our little mechanism that we're going to use to push up and down. What you can do is you can put a flower on the top. So let's put a flower on the top. I think we use this purple one. I'm going to use tape runner actually, because the wet glue is not going to have enough time to, to set. Put that in there. Make sure that goes in there. And then I'm just going to move them flowers out of the way so we don't need them anymore. You can save them for another project. And I've just got some Copic markers. I've got a light and a dark green. Just so we can put a little bit of definition onto these um, actual foliage so it gives a little bit more character. And because they bleed back, don't worry if it looks really dark at first. I'm just going to put a little bit more line into them, really. A little bit more definition. That's the darker one. And then we'll just go for the lighter one. This adds a bit more to it. You could leave them plain if you wanted to, but I wanted to do that. And you could also, as well, with these small leaves, it's just took a few in randomly. So let's. Let's do a few of these. We'll put one up here, look. And then we've got a light green one, which can go over here. Oh, got my dirty finger on that one. Just give me a second and we'll swap that to a clean one. And I think we need a light one then, don't we? We'll get a light one over at this other side. Just brings, brings that out a little bit more, doesn't it? And then I've got some lovely sentiments now. Sticking with those from the Stamps By Me range, because I think they're so versatile. You get so many on a roll as well. So I think we're going to go Crafty Sister, so proud of you. And we'll put them onto our plant pot. So we'll give a bit of glue. I tend to want to put these on the lower half so it doesn't affect this being too tight. You don't want to make it rigid for the mechanism. And we can put that one on. And then push them down, make sure they've stuck. And you can see now, we've got our lovely card, and the mechanism works with pull it up. As a little dinosaur, and we can add him back down in the pot. So it, it's entirely how you, you want to do it, but I think that's a lovely card. Uh, I'll just have him peeking out for a look for the last shot. Little eyes, there you go. You can see it's a really nice card, that one, and it's um, really fun to do and easy to make, honestly. It's just taking the time, isn't it, to make them components and just not rush that little bit with the gluing. But I'm glad you've enjoyed that. I see um, on all the comments that you've really enjoyed both demonstrations, so thank you for that. If you do get time afterwards, please leave a comment on the video, then it helps people just um, decide whether to watch it, if it's for them. But thank you very much for your time today and spending um, this show. Um, I'll be back with you next Monday at the same time, 1 o'clock. But until then, we'll see you then. See you later, guys. Bye.